Our goal is to find the absolute maximum and minimum on a closed interval, AB. And here we have an example drawn of a function with a lot of nice little bumps in it. And those bumps give us local maximums and minimums. So let's identify all those just on this function given, right? Let's say we're looking for the maximum. Okay, so I'd go through and I'd identify all the local maximums. I would do that using the critical points. So I have two there. So it might be tempting to say that the absolute maximum is this kind of high point right here on the function. But it's not because we're looking at the entirety of the function on the closed interval a, b. So we also have to consider the endpoints because maybe that's one of the highest points of the function. And indeed, that's the case here. Okay, so tracing the endpoints a and b up, we see that we actually, here at a, we get a higher point, not so much on b, right? b doesn't really do much for us. But on a, we clearly get the highest point of this function on the interval a, b. So there is our absolute maximum. And we wouldn't say the absolute maximum is a, because that's not the maximum itself. The maximum would be f of a, f of a, because note that it's the y value that actually represents the maximum or the minimum itself. Okay, let's turn our focus to the minimums here. Again, we're going to look at all the little bumps. Those are really the critical points of the function. And we're going to look at the endpoints. So endpoints overlap. Okay, and then we just have to go through and, and just check one by one and find which one's the smallest. Well, for the absolute minimum, it's not one of the endpoints. It's the it is a local minimum that is actually our absolute minimum. And if we call this point C, then our absolute minimum is F of C. Okay, because remember the Y value is going to be our actual minimum, not the point C. Okay, so seeing this, we can probably deduce what the method is, but I'll write it out. Okay, this just codifies what we were saying with this illustration here, but here we have the steps for finding the absolute max or min on closed interval a, b. And note this only works on a closed interval. And note that we're assuming that this function is continuous on this closed interval a, b here. Okay, so step one is find all critical points. All right, we do that using the derivative and noting where the derivative either equals zero or does not exist. Make, making sure those points are in the domain of the function itself. Step two, evaluate f at all critical points and the endpoints a, b. So we're going to take all these possible maxes and mins and sit there and one by one plug them into f, not the derivative. We want to plug them back into the original function um, and just check which one's the biggest and which one's the smallest. That's step three. The absolute maximum is the largest value from step two and the absolute minimum is the smallest value from step two. So let's try this with an example. Okay, here's an example. Find the absolute maximum and minimum for f of x equals 3x to the 2 thirds minus x on the closed interval 0 to 27. Okay, let's follow these steps here. We have step one, find all the critical points. And remember, that's a two-step method. We're looking for points where the derivative equals 0 and where the derivative does not exist. So let's take the derivative and see what happens. Hit it with the power rule here. We have f prime of x equals, well, 3 times 2 thirds is simply 2. x to the 2 thirds minus 1 is negative 1 third. Okay, there's all that. And then minus, well, the derivative of x is simply 1. Okay. And here we want to figure out where this derivative equals 0 and where it does not exist. So here I'm going to use the technique for factoring out the term with the most negative exponent which is the method that I recommend getting used to, but then I'll also show it at the end how to do it with the least common denominator. Okay, so the term with the most negative exponent is x to the negative one-third, so I'm going to factor that out to the front. That gives us x to the negative one-third out front. What's left here? Well, we have a two, because that whole term got factored out, the x to the negative one-third got factored out, minus x to the one-third. Why is that? Well, when we factor something out, remember we're dividing all the terms left behind by it. And when we divide the terms left behind, we subtract the exponents. So here we have 1. And when we factor out this exponent, we'd get x to the minus minus 1 third, which would make it x to the positive 1 third. So that's what's happening there. 
Now we want to take this whole thing and set it equal to zero and solve that. And note that we can see right away that x equals zero for this term is where the derivative does not exist. And then we set the second term equal to zero. So we get right here, we get two equals x to the one third. Cube both sides to get eight equals x. Okay, so our critical points, now let's just do a quick check to make sure those are both in the domain of our function. They both are. So our critical points are eight and zero. Okay, next we have to test each one of those critical points along with our endpoints, that's step three. And make sure you do this in the original function, not the derivative. Okay, so it might be helpful to make a little table here, though you certainly don't have to. So what are we testing here? We're testing zero, eight, and 27. So it's interesting that zero is both an endpoint and a critical point. Okay, plugging those into the function, we get zero, four, and zero again. And you may be saying, well, how do you, how do you get those numbers so quickly? Well, note that something to the two thirds, let's take 27 to the two thirds, for instance. What this really is, is the cubed root of 27 quantity squared. Cubed root of 27 is three, three squared is nine. Right, so those rational exponents really aren't too bad if you take it as the radical first and then you take whatever result to the exponent. Okay, finally, we want to determine what's our absolute maximum and minimum. So for this, we only use the y values. So we're looking at a y value of zero that occurs at both zero and 27. So that is our absolute minimum and then four is our absolute maximum. Then for our final answer, we essentially just say the, what the maximum and minimum are and where they occur. So we say that the absolute maximum is four at x equals eight. And then we'd say that the absolute minimum is zero at x equals zero and 27. Okay, lastly, let's, let's check out this derivative without fact, using the technique to factor out the most negative exponent here. So say we had our same derivative, 2x to the negative 1 third minus 1. Uh, we want to set this thing equal to 0. So now we're looking for common denominators. So we can look at this as 2 over x to the 1 third minus 1. And from here, we can quickly find the LCD, least common denominator, which is x to the 1 third. So I'll multiply this by x to the 1 third over x to the 1 third. Okay, this gives us 2 minus x to the 1 third all over x to the 1 third equals 0. And we can quickly see that the top gives us x equals 8. And the bottom gives us x equals 0 for our critical points. So that might be even easier than the method that I showed originally, but I'd say it's important to be able to do it both ways.